This is a companion video to the Be Credible textbook on using Google Scholar to find scholarly sources. Google Scholar is at scholar.google.com. The interface looks a lot like the regular Google search bar, and searching works the same way. You can use search operators, such as quotation marks and the minus sign, to create precise search terms. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to pretend that my research topic is dogs thinking, how dogs think and understand the world. As with the beginning of any search, I want to create a list of potential search terms by coming up with synonyms for my original terms. I also set as my goal for this search, reaching a PDF of a research article. PDFs of research articles are really useful because we can download them to our computers and add our own notes and highlights to them as we read. So I always try to find the PDF of a study I want to read. When I type dogs and thinking into the search box, I get more than 500,000 results back. The left side of the results screen offers me a couple of options for narrowing down my search. If I'm interested in only recent articles, I can specify that I want to see only articles published this year or in the last two or four years, or I can specify a custom date range. I can also sort articles by when they were published. The default sort is by how relevant Google thinks the results are for my search terms. Let's glance at the first few results to understand what the results are showing. The results include the title of the information, its authors, and a preview of where my search terms appear in the text. Some of the entries also indicate whether they are a book. Under each entry, there is also a number indicating how many times something has been cited. In the right column, there are more links to PDFs. The links in the main column lead to the articles and books official publisher websites. Unless I'm using Google Scholar through a library, this means that these links often end up at paywalls. For example, this is a paywall. I can't access the full article or PDF unless I pay for it. The links in the right column are less official, but oftentimes they'll lead to open access research depositories that offer the information for free. In this case, this link leads to the PDF of the article in an institutional research repository. Let's say that as I scroll through these entries, I decide that none of them are hitting the mark for my topic, so I change the search term from thinking to cognition. In these results, let's say that this second entry looks ideal to me, and I decide that I really want to find the PDF of it. But the main link leads me to a paywall, and there is no alternative link in the right column. Is there any way for me to access the full text or PDF of this article? You might recall from the Research Studies chapter that libraries subscribe to databases and journals so that their users can have access to these resources. This is true for our library at the University of Kansas. But to take advantage of this access, it's necessary to log into Google Scholar through the library. The exception to this is if you're accessing the internet at the university, including in your dorm, in which case you're automatically being routed to Google Scholar through the campus library. Since I'm creating this video at home and not on campus, I will go to the library website and find Google Scholar on the list of databases. After entering my credentials, I will again type in my search term. Let's compare these two results screens. This is what my results look like when I log in through the library. And this is what they look like when I go directly to Google Scholar. Library, or on campus, direct to Google Scholar. You've noticed that when I go through the library or when I access Google Scholar on campus, I get a bunch of links that say get at KU that I don't get when I access Google Scholar directly. This is the advantage of all those database and journal subscriptions that the libraries purchase on our behalf. The second entry in the results didn't have any links other than the paywall when I went to Google Scholar directly. But here I get an HTML link and a get at KU link. If I click on the Get at KU link, I end up at the official journal page again, but this time it's not a paywall. I get a button that says Download PDF, which is what I really want, 
and I can also read the entire article right on this web page. So that's how you take advantage of the library subscriptions while also using Google Scholar. There is one last link that's worth exploring in Google Scholar. It's the cited by link that's under every entry. Recall that every piece of scholarly research fits into some kind of an ongoing scholarly conversation. This link leads us to articles about how this conversation has evolved since this article was published in 2004. In this case, the article has been cited by 273 other articles that have moved the conversation forward since 2004. If you find an article that's on your topic and you want to find more recent articles on the same topic, it is often very useful to explore the list of articles behind the cited by link. And that's how you use Google Scholar to find scholarly literature. I wish you many successful searches.